Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna look at Raytheon Technologies Corporation, a defense stock. We're gonna analyze their business, look at their financials, and use an intrinsic valuation model to figure out a fair value for the stock. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I do a lot of stock analysis here and other investing topics. So consider hitting that subscribe button if you like that kind of thing. All right, let's get started. All right, here is Raytheon Technologies stock. It's up about 27% over the past year. It's currently trading about 21 times next period's earnings. A little bit of a dividend yield there, 2.36%. And it's being valued at about $121 billion. Now with the PE ratio at about 21, it's not going to be a good deal unless there's a little bit of growth. We don't need to see a lot of growth, but a little bit, and it could be a good deal. Raytheon operates in four business segments. You got Collins Aerospace Systems, Pratt and Whitney, which makes aircraft engines. You have Raytheon Intelligence in Space, and Raytheon Missiles and Defense. The bulk of their revenue comes from the United States. They do mostly sell products rather than do services, as you can see from the bar chart here. Now in all of their segments, they have a little bit of customer concentration. Their largest customer is the US government by far. And as far as you know, intelligence in space and missiles and defense, it's pretty dramatic as you can see from the bar chart here. The, the U.S. government accounts for the majority of their revenue for those two segments. Now, if you guys watch my videos on other defense stocks, you know I'm about to say about customer concentration. But if you haven't seen those videos, customer concentration is generally risky. It generally increases the risk of the business being so reliant on one or two customers. But research generally shows that having the U.S. government as your major customer is actually less risky. It provides stability, predictable cash flows. So it's actually a good thing. Here's Raytheon's balance sheet. Uh, leverage is not that high compared to other defense companies like Lockheed Martin. That is something to keep in mind as we do the analysis. They, they have a lot less default risk. Their liquidity ratios are respectable but not outstanding here with the current ratio slightly above one. If you guys don't know any of these formulas, they're all in the description below. Interest coverage ratio is horrible. I don't know what's going on here. We're going to have to check it out. I wonder if interest expense is abnormally high or maybe profits are abnormally low in the most current year. So looking at their income statements for the past five years, I do see that their operating income is abnormally low in the most recent year. And so their interest coverage ratio is actually quite a bit better under normal operating conditions. Okay guys, here's a DuPont analysis where we break return on equity down into its three parts. What I can say here is somewhat of an underwhelming return on equity. I've seen a lot better, that's all I will say. Net income margins are respectable for the industry. I certainly like the way they were increasing in 2018 and 2019. Let's hope they can get back to that after a rough 2020. Asset turnover is not great at all. As you can see there, that tells you for every dollar of assets, how many dollars in sales can you generate? And the answer for Raytheon appears to be around 41 cents in the most recent year. Pretty poor. So, decent business, but I'm not in love with it. Alright guys, so what we're going to do next is use a free cash flow to equity model. 
which is an intrinsic valuation model. What this model does is it says that the fair price of a stock should be equal to the present value of all the cash the company is going to generate for shareholders. So we're going to start with revenue growth. We're going to estimate profit margins. We're going to put it all together. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm assuming with the following spreadsheet. All right, guys, here's the path forward for Raytheon Technologies. According to analyst forecast data, they are expected to report about $65 billion in revenue next year, followed by pretty modest growth, about 8.9%, 6 6.6%, then 28 There aren't really many forecasts after year 4, so I'm plugging in fairly modest estimates of about 4% per year, then dropping to 3 if that's true, this is our revenue stream. To get from revenue to profit or net income, we need to know what our margins are going to be. I said 8.7%. That is the 10-year average. Now, it was trending upward before last year. I could see arguments for higher, but I'm going to stick with the 10-year average there. That gives us net income for the next 10 years. The final step for equity investors is to take that income and subtract reinvestments. Now my reinvestment rate that I've chosen is pretty high for the first year. Decently high for the second year guys. But really then dropping off as their growth tapers off. Remember if you're not growing by much at all you probably don't need to reinvest a lot. That gives us a stream of cash flows. Let's see what a fair value is given these cash flows. All right, guys, so here are the cash flows. We have a fair value of three components. You got cash on hand. You've got the present value of the cash flows over the next 10 years. And you have the present value of that terminal value. The terminal value is the cash flows in the 11th year divided by the discount rate minus some kind of perpetual growth rate, we're going to assume they can grow cash flows at 2% forever after the 10th year. So the company's total value just depends on what kind of required rate of return you have, what kind of discount rate you're using. I put out values from 7 to 10% discount rates. As you can see here, the company is actually going to be overvalued no matter what discount rate you choose from 7 to 10. It's pretty fairly valued if you're looking at a 7% discount rate. So if you want about a 7% return, you're probably going to get it with Raytheon. All right, guys, here are my final thoughts on Raytheon Technologies. A pretty good balance sheet, a decent business model, uh, not that great, honestly. If you saw my videos on other military slash defense stocks, I was a little more impressed with their businesses. And as far as valuation, I really don't understand Raytheon's valuation. They are a stock that's being recommended by Seeking Alpha. I subscribe to premium and that's one of their recommended stocks people are bullish on. But if the analysts are correct, I really don't understand the hype for the stock. If they're really not going to grow much beyond next year, why are they trading at such a premium? I just can't see it. So for me, I'm going to pass on it. I was hopeful I could find another deal. I've been so successful finding good military stocks, but not this one for me. Thank you guys for watching and let me know what you're going to do in the comments below.